Good morning. Good morning. We are now at Matthew chapter 1. After a very rigorous introduction to the gospel by Matthew last week, I think it is time to get started on Matthew chapter 1. And as I mentioned, uh, we will be first looking at the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, some people, they keep pets uh, and uh, what a special breed. Then they know who is the father of this dog and this dog and this dog. And then they think, wow, pure breed or not. Um, and I met some people in China, even last year when I went, uh, they can trace their ancestry uh, how many generations away and they say, my father was a pastor and learned under the feet of this uh, evangelist from uh, England. So they do keep records, but no one kept records as thoroughly as the Jews. They really keep their records uh, in a synagogue or place of uh, worship where they can trace each and every family to its origin. So you truly know that indeed you are one of the 12 tribes. So, we're going to look at this today and see the validity of the claim of Jesus that he is indeed the Son of God. So, Come, all are welcome. There are plenty of, uh, as long as you see empty seats, you can sure, occupy. Yeah. <coughs> I'm trying to recover from a uh, sore throat. So come, let's commit this time to the Lord Father. Once again, we are so grateful to you for your word preserved for us for our edification. And as we embark on the book of Matthew, once again, we ask that your Holy Spirit will just uh, be with us through this journey and teach us and reveal your word and your truth to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, so if you look at the first 16 verses of Matthew chapter 1, uh, it is indeed the genealogy of Jesus. And I explained to you last week the four different uh, records of the Gospel by Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Uh, why Matthew and Luke recorded the genealogy. And this is to trace the lineage of the one who claimed to be the Son of God. He is the Messiah. And if we look at John chapter 18, verse 37, John chapter 18, John chapter 18, verse 37, when Jesus was presented before Pilate, Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Are you a king then? Now all this happened, this event happened before Matthew wrote the gospel record. You understand? Because Matthew recorded the book that we are reading now years later after Jesus died. So this event happened earlier. And Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So Jesus stated, he did not deny, no, 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 I am not, but he said, I am a king. And for this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. So if you were a Jew, and in this case we have Matthew, okay, fine. What evidence do you have? What proof do you have that you are indeed the king as promised by God 
to according to the line of David. What proof do you have? Now, the Jews, all these years, they've been waiting for the Messiah. And they only got two tests. Two tests. To test whether indeed what you claim is true or not. I'm giving you this background, this breakdown, so that you read now, the genealogy doesn't become meaningless to you. They only got two tests. Number one is the racial test. Racial test. That means, are you truly a Jew? If you're not a Jew, out, disqualified. So, it is not just being a Jew. Are you Abrahamic? Because God started, God started this Jewish race through Abraham, right? He called Abraham out of the land of earth. So, uh, that's why the, the, the genealogy did not go all the way to Adam. Because Matthew is trying to present Jesus as the king of the Jews. So as far as the Jews are concerned, I'm only interested if you come from the number one person in the Jewish race. And who is he? Abraham. I don't care about Adam. But when we go to Luke, Luke presented Jesus as the son of man. If you say son of man, then we must go right to do to the first man. That's why we go, he went all the way to Adam. But to the Jew, they are only interested in the first Jew, so to speak, and that was Abraham. So that's why it started from that. First test, are you Abrahamic? So can I trace all the way that you are indeed through the, your family line? You started, your family started with Abraham. First test. Second test. First test is the racial test. Second te test is the legal test. The legal test, that means, uh, because God say, uh, you are, the, through the line of David, shall come the Messiah, the King. So, legally, are you from that line of David? Because if you are, then you have a right to the throne. So, this second test is the legal test, and this is the Davidic test. So, the first test, is Abrahamic. That means, because all the Jews come from Abraham. So you pass the first test, fine. Second test, are you Davidic? Means, are you from the line of David? If you pass these two tests, you are who you claim to be. So, Matthew, being the tax collector, very analytical, very careful and cautious, he presented the evidence to the people of Israel to the Jews and it is recorded here so before I start reading uh, verse 1 I want you to look at verse 17 with me because I don't want to read all the generations and then you you try you try and comprehend them I want to break it into three sections but first you look at verse 17 so all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. So this verse 17 is referring to the 16 verses that were recorded before verse 17. From verse 1 to verse 16, many generations were listed. So now Matthew is saying, so the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the captivity in Babylon, are 14 generations and from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations so you have 14 14 14 <coughs> so that will help it help us a lot uh, in our analysis so you I think you have this in your notes you have Okay, so you will follow me as I read the first 14 generations, which is first 14 generation, which is from verse 1 to verse 6. Verse 1. The title there is The Genealogy of Jesus. Now, genealogy. Uh, has the meaning of Genesis, like the beginning. Okay, it also has the meaning of generation. So genealogy, I mean, it, it means 
Genesis, the beginning, it means also generation. And if you remember last week, I mentioned that in the first five books, first five chapters of Matthew, they are synonymous with the first five books of the Bible. Chapter 1 is likened to Genesis. So we are seeing Genesis here. So it is easier for the Jews to accept. So the book of the genealogy or the origin or generation of uh, Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac and Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron and Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Ami Nadab. Ami Nadab begot Nashon and Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab, Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. So, if you go and count, uh, count, go and number them, starting with Abraham as number one, you will find that when the, by the time you get to David in verse 6, there will be 14. But let's start with verse 1. Remember, I told you about the Abrahamic test and the Davidic test. So look at verse 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Greek translation of the Hebrew name Joshua. You know that, right? Jesus is a Greek translation of the Hebrew name Joshua. Joshua means the Lord saves, Jehovah saves. So Jesus is the Greek translation. Christ is his title. Christ is Messiah. That is his title. So you read, uh, straight away in the first verse, when, a when Matthew wrote the first verse, he said, this is the history of Jesus Christ, the son of David. So, Matthew is straightway stating this is the Davidic promise and then, comma, the son of Abraham and this is the Abrahamic test to start with the Jews in mind to prove to them I'm proving, I will prove to you the fulfillment of the Davidic test and the Davidic promise and the Abrahamic promise and that this person will pass the two tests now, son of David. If you if you look if you look at Revelation chapter twenty two. Verse sixteen. If you look at Revelation twenty two, verse sixteen. In this last book of the Bible, Jesus said, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. And Jesus said, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. I am the root and offspring. That means root is below ground, right? That means Talking about the ancestor. Offspring is what it comes for and the generations. That means I am in the line of David. So this is what Jesus stated. And Matthew by stating this is to show this is what Jesus did not say. Oh, uh, no, no, no. He said, I am. I am a king. I am the root. I am the offspring. And then we look, we look at the next one, the son of Abraham. Now the son of Abraham, now for the Jews, uh, they know this very well. Jews in Genesis chapter 12. And we look from verse 1. When God spoke to Abraham, Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, 
from your father's house to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And make your name great and you shall be a blessing. So this was the promise that God made to Abraham and Abraham took the step of faith, left the land of earth and followed God. Verse 3 is important. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curses you and now curse him who curses you. you I, I will elaborate another day but you notice I will bless those who bless you. This is plural, everyone. But the individuals amongst them who is against God, God will take him to task. So will, God will not punish the whole lot but the individual. I will curse him who curses you and in you, that means through Abraham. This is the Abrahamic test. In you, <coughs> all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So, by stating the son of Abraham, that means Jesus is from this person that Matthew is going to bring up is from the line of Abraham and through him, through him, who comes from Abraham, that line, he, all the families of the world shall be blessed. You follow me? So, Matthew wasn't beating around the bush. He came forward and he stated this to the Davidic, Abrahamic, and according to the scripture, if you are a Jew, there shall be no more <coughs> doubt. So, we look again at, uh, still in Genesis, we look at 22, verse 18. You know, as 20, you know what happened in uh, Genesis chapter 22? Do you know? When God tested Abraham's faith and told him to sacrifice his son at Mount Moriah, and Abraham faithfully obeyed, right? And as he was about to plunge the knife into his son, the angel stopped him. No, you passed the test. But that's not the, the, the main thing. The main thing here is, God said, He will provide. Where is it? Where? Verse 18. Okay. No. When? Uh, ah, okay. okay. I want to show you verse 14. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, the mouth of the Lord, it shall be provided. What happened here was the angel said, don't proceed because God will provide. And Years later, indeed, a father provided the sacrifice of his son at a hill not far away from Mount Moriah. This hill is called Calvary. And this son, this son of the father was sacrificed and through him, verse 18, in your seed, that means through who? Abraham, right? In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. If you just look, well, Abraham wanted to sacrifice his son, willing to do so, then God says, stop. Then the place shall be called, the Lord will provide, because the Lord said he will provide the sacrifice, no need you. And years later he did. And through this sacrifice, this person, in your seed, all the nations shall be blessed. And who is this person? Jesus Christ. You see? All the link. So now we look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. This is the changeless promise. God does not change. And His promise shall remain yes and amen. So in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, Paul wrote this. Now to Abraham, 
and his seed and capital S were the promises made. We just read, right? In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, and we read in uh, Genesis 22, verse 18, the seed, Jesus. It, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one. And to your seed, and who is he? Paul answered the question. And to your seed, who is Christ? I will not go on to verse 17, because in, in Galatians, uh, Paul was trying to debate and argue and present the law which was fulfilled by Jesus Christ. So it's a, com a comparison. But I just wanted to point to you. So we'll be talking about the seed, the seed, the seed. And who is the seed? Christ. Christ. So this verse 1 itself, if you really expound it, it sets, it gives you the setting and the foundation for the Jewish mind. If he reads this, uh, okay, okay, no need to think any further. Now just focus on the record. Focus on the record because this person is indeed the seed as promised to Abraham and the, and professed and confessed by Jesus himself. He said, I am the king, I am the root, and I am the offspring. So now we look at the evidence. They have all this record. So, verse 2. Abraham begot Isaac. We all know that, right? Now in this list that we are going to look at from verse 1 to verse 16, how many have read? Or you start Matthew chapter 1, you straight go to verse 17. <laughs> if you have read, you will find that this is not a perfect list. Is it right? You will find it's not a perfect list. First, the Jews are, are quite chauvinistic. It's men. Anyway, in the Middle East culture, it's all about men, right? In this list, you find men, you find women, right? You find heroes, good kings, but you also find non-heroes, bad kings, bad kings. And you will find in this list, uh, this is a Jewish king, supposed to be all Jewish, right? But you also find Gentiles here, Gentiles. Okay, like maybe if they are goody goody Gentiles, huh, we accept them. But no you find prostitutes. you find uh, 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 Hittites and uh, adulterers. David was an adulterer. So they are not perfect people. And yet, God included all this in the list, in the genealogy of the generation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And out came our Lord. You know what that tells me? We all got hope. In God's grand plan of redemption, right from the beginning, from Abraham, He thought of us. Because if that list only included men and Jews and no women, no Gentiles, no nothing, it will be quite a poor state no? this Saturday yeah, we don't need all these Saturday lessons. <laughs> Straight away go Chinese New Year shopping. Yeah. But the lesson here is no matter how messed up you are, the sinner that you and I are, if you follow Christ, you submit yourself to God in true person of Jesus Christ, you will be counted in his life, in his list. For us, it's in the book, Lamb's Book of Life. You'll be counted for him. So, don't skip the genealogy. Because when you read this, you should be celebrating that, wow, God, hope, I'm included in this grand plan. Now, we start with the first name, Abraham, father of faith. Was he the perfect one? <laughs> no, right? He tried to help. He tried to help God. God said, no, through you all, oh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, through you all the families of the world will be uh, blessed and so on. Wow, wait and wait and wait, still no kid. No? KK also not built yet. <laughs> Cannot help him. So, 
try and help. So you use Haga and then come up with uh, Ishmael and now today we have all these problems, right? Okay. And then during famine in, in, in chapter earlier part of chapter 12, uh, Genesis, famine time ran quickly to where Egypt. He said, wow, who is that beautiful woman next to you? He lied, right? He said, what the May May, one my sister. <laughs> perfect? Not perfect. Yeah, David, in one afternoon, he broke five of the Ten Commandments, right? From lying to covetousness to adultery to murder and so on. But God elevated him and said, through your line, wow, well, there will be a Messiah. I'm sure with all this description, I'm sure you fall within some of these uh, sins, right? If they got hope, we got hope. Follow me. So, praise God. Praise God. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob or Jacob. Jacob begot... Now, you notice, eh? What happened to Esau? What happened to Esau? In this list, the list, this is the list of the, the line that God has chosen. Those that are not like, otherwise could be Abraham begot Ishmael, he came first one. But no, it's not in God's chosen list, chosen line. So this is what we call God's election. Say, why not? Uh, when, uh, when we get rapture, you ask him. <laughs> so, Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Jerah by Tamar. Before we go to that, do you know Judah? Judah is a very important uh, part of this genealogy. You see, Abraham important. Yes, yes, sister. But Judah, we cannot miss Judah. Why? Because you see, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. But one of the elders said to me, said to John the Apostle, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. So you have Apostle John up there, you know, in the island of Patmos. By chapter 5, he was taken to heaven and he was supposed to write down everything that Jesus told him, right? Then he was writing. Wow, then he was uh, emotional. The elder said, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, then you'll be wondering, who is this lion on the tribe of Judah? But the next part, the root of David, when you tell it to him, the root of David, then he as a Jew will know who, who is this? Jesus. So Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, when was this first promise to the Jews? That they can link, okay, wait. There are 12 sons, but of the 12 sons, this is Judah. Jesus is coming from this tribe. How do we know? So go back to Genesis chapter 49. Verse 10. Now in Genesis chapter 49, Yaakov. Now in Israel, they don't pronounce J. They pronounce J as Y. So Jerusalem, not Jacob, Yaakov. Okay? Yeshua. Anyway, um, you are a Chinese Jew, so you can pronounce J. Okay? <laughs> so, at his deathbed, in this chapter, in his deathbed, he was, he called all his sons together, and then he was releasing prophecies to each of them. When he came to, when he came to, uh, verse 10, he said, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes and to him shall be the obedience of the people. So before, before this, the scepter, the scepter 
is the symbol of rulership. Whoever has the scepter, it is synonymous with him being the ruler, the king. So the scepter shall not depart from Judah, from his line, shall not depart from his tribe. So through the line of David, there shall be a king, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. A lawgiver, the simplest one you can think of is Moses. Moses. But this lawgiver is the one, not referring to Moses, but referring to the one who has given us the constitution. When we go to chapter 5, when we look at the, the Sermon on the Mount, these are the do's and the don'ts and, and, and the how to live righteously and walk righteously before the Lord. So he's the one who gives the rules, gives the law. So from between his feet, that means what? Through his generation, through his procreation, between his feet, that means from his generation, from his loins, shall come. That means through all the generation there shall be until Shiloh come. Shiloh is a picture of Jesus. It is a description of the king, the Messiah. Until he come. So the scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until the ruler, the Messiah comes. And to him, to him, to who? who? To him, to Shiloh, to this person, capital H, shall be the obedience of all the people. So all, eventually, this is talking about future, mm -hmm. eventually through the trap of Judah, there shall be a lawgiver, also known as Shiloh, and all the people in the world will bow down to this person in obedience. And this person is Jesus. And that's why we go around singing the song, Lion Jesus from the tribe, the lion from the tribe of Judah and so on. It all started here. It all started here in Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. Are you with me so far? Yes. Okay. I think this, today I think can only do chapter 1. <laughs> okay, go. Okay, verse 3. Verse 2. Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Now we just narrow down to Judah. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tama. Now, who is Tama? Daughter-in-law of Judah. Now, you can read all this in Genesis chapter 38. I, I, I don't want to take time on that. Daughter-in-law of Judah. Hey, how come daughter-in-law and father-in-law got one C? Okay, but Tama wasn't a Jew. Of course, anyway, Tama is a lady, a female. And she wasn't a Jew. In fact, all the ladies listed here in the genealogy, the four of them are Gentiles. Except one. Towards the end, there is one Jew. But the four, first four, they are Gentiles. Tama was a Gentile. Tama was his daughter-in-law. But his son died. His son died. And without child, and suppose the sec I mean, according to the Jewish law, the second son is supposed to take over, and and and, but the second son disobeyed, right? Did not. So anyway, meanwhile, Judah's wife passed away, so he became now a widower and lonely. So he went to look for fulfillment, and this is immoral relationship. And this Tama, one thing to be part of the family and then to produce, so she would not let go of that promise. So she sat by the roadside and dressed like a prostitute. And here comes the father-in-law, uh, negotiated a price, and they had relationship. To cut the whole long story short, uh, she became pregnant and so on. And so this are uh, listed here. But we said, what? Then Abraham not perfect, <laughs> Judah also not perfect, go and visit prostitute. Actually, she's not a prostitute. She just seduced her father-in-law because she, she wants to... I mean, according to the law, 
if my husband die, then the, the second uh, young, younger brother should take over that responsibility. Also didn't happen. And then she's almost like going to be cast away. So the only way is to make opportunity and she seduced her father-in-law. And she found her name in the book or in the Genesis, gen genealogy. You know, we are all included in the Lamb's Book of Life by grace. Our inclusion in the Book of Life is by grace. Nothing that we did that we can boast. Nothing that Tama or Abraham or Judah did that they can boast. Their inclusion in the genealogy of Jesus Christ is by grace. So, understand that. So, you can go and do all the works you want, but know that first, it is by grace you are included in God's book of life. So we finish with Tama. Then Perez begot Hezron. Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Aminadab. And Aminadab begot Nashon. Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz. Boaz by Rahab. And you say, wow. Who is, I mean, we all know Boaz, right? Yes. But you ask, hey, but Rehab, uh, prostitute, right? She hanged the thing outside the window, red color. You know, that's why today they call it red like district. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's look at Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, verse uh, 3, I think. Yeah. Verse 3. Let me see. Hebrews 11, verse. Can you find that? Where is the one on the app? Ah, 30, uh, not 3. Okay. Um, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Remember? Yes. But before this happened, Rahab actually received the spies so that they can go in the land and they can see. And she said, Actually, we know. How come they know? We read the Straits Times or CNN. No. But by divine revelation or whatever, she knew what God had done for them from Egypt out into the wilderness. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And so when the walls came down and Joshua and his army went in to uh, uh, claim the land, conquer the land, they spared Rahab. But first, Rahab gave she gave hospitality to them, she hosted them, she accommodated them, she lied for them also. She helped the Jews. So, when, when that happened, she did not perish because she had received the spies with peace. And this is back to like Revelation, no, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Those who bless you, I will bless them. So, for that good works, she found herself in the book of, uh, in the gene in gene genealogy. So she's a second lady and she was a Gentile and a prostitute. And she, she begot, Selman begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. And you will read all this in the book of Ruth. Ruth chapter 2, verse 1. Ruth. And here you find there was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. So Ruth the Moabites said to Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean hay of grain after him in whose sight 
I may find favor. You know this story, right? Mm -hmm. So it is okay for girls to chase men to get married. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong. Don't sit there and say, no, I wait. Sometimes they can. Okay. So by being faithful to first her mother-in-law. Because they went to Moab, right? Then the son died. Then the husband died. Then she said, hey, you, 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 you are free. I go back to Israel. She said, no. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. I go with you. She could have broken off, but she followed. She accepted uh, Naomi. And so, God bless her. And through her return and union with Boaz, she got herself included in the genealogy. So Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, another lady, another Gentile. She's the third one. Obed begot Jesse. And who is Jesse? The father of David. And Jesse begot David the king. So if Ruth, uh, if Ruth did not go back with <coughs> Naomi to Israel, there wouldn't be this one. She said, okay, la, fine. I stay here, you go back to Israel. But I'm sure God, if Ruth did not go with Naomi, God will have alternate plan. Yes. This is the sovereign God, the God or only potent God that we know. But it is ordered and arranged in such a way, this is what we call the providence of God. So, and Jesse begot David the king. Now, if you go and count, indeed, from Abraham to David is 14. 14. Have you all counted? Yes. Go and count. Okay, 14. And uh, this is the first section as in verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And in this, we already saw men, women, uh, Gentile, Jews, and, and uh, people of not so noble profession. So again, I, mentioned, I, I, I say that no matter how messed up you are, as long as you repent and you come to God, you will be in this list. And your, your, your past will not disrupt God's future plans yes. or even a sovereign purpose, present and future. So now we go on to the second section of this list. So David the king begot Solomon. So just now we I show you this. Uh, so you see, David, the first one, all the way there. And now we start with Solomon. So, David the king begot Solomon by her who has been the wife of Uriah. Now, you know who the name of this lady, right? Bathsheba. Because she was taking a bath. <laughs> Bathsheba. Uh, but her name is not mentioned. Her name is not mentioned. However, by the description, the wife of Uriah, then you know. This is Bathsheba. And David, again, as I mentioned earlier, not the perfect man. In, in one afternoon, he broke five of the Ten Commandments. But David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. So this is the fourth woman in this list. And she was a Gentile. Solomon begot Rahab Bomb, bad king or good king? Bad king. Rahab Bomb begot Abijah, bad king. Abijah begot Asa, good king. Asa begot Jehoshaphat, good king. Jehoshaphat begot Joram, bad king. Joram begot Uzziah, good king or bad king? <coughs> <coughs> Not so bad. Huh? Be good. Uzziah begot Jotham. Jotham begot Ahaz. And Ahaz begot Hezekiah. 
uh, good king, <laughs> then he almost died, he asked for extension of life, uh, through his extension in the 15 years, uh, <clears throat> not so good. And Hezekiah begot Manasseh. Manasseh is the worst king <laughs> of all. Hey, but his name is here. Manasseh begot Ammon. And Ammon begot Josiah. Good king. Josiah begot Jeconiah. Uh, Jeconiah bad king. Yeah. And his brothers, about the time they were carried away to Babylon. So all this from David until Jeconiah. Uh, right up to the time when Judah was taken into exile. The first in 605, second 597, the third one is 586, when they were taken. That's where <coughs> the line, they counted until that. Now, so, what we see here, from Solomon to Jeconiah, we count 14. Um, this table that I found, put it this way, so you 14, 14. Because if you go and count on your own, just name on your own, you will find that it is 14, 14, and 13. You always struggle. And later, I will show you some people, wait, 14, you only got 13 here. I tell you, the 14 one is the church. Wow, what a revelation. <laughs> Okay, so this second section, I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I highlighted to you good king, bad king, good king, bad king. Again, their inclusion in this list is by grace. Hey, how can? You're evil, really evil. But by the grace of God, their names are here. Actually, if you go and study uh, the king, the, the full list of the history of the king, you will find that there are three kings who are missing from this list. Yeah. And one of them, Amaziah. Let me see if I got their names written here. Uh, one is Amaziah, and then. But these three kings, they were the offsprings of Ahab and Jezebel. You know Ahab and Jezebel? Mm -hmm. Totally, totally anti God. Totally again, evil and you know, all cows and you know, uh, working with all the false prophets. We were up in, we were up in uh, what's that, Carmel. Yeah, all the four hundred prophets and all this, all during the rule or during the reign of Ahab and Jezebel. They're really anti God, and because they were anti God and they were against the line of David really trying to destroy the life, so they were taken out. But the rest, though they were evil and so on, uh, but they were not really as evil, so to speak, as these three kings that were excluded from the list. But there's a separate study. <coughs> so, if you count from Solomon to Jeconias, um, you have 14. And verse 12, verse 12, and after they were brought to Babylon, so up to verse 11 is they were sent into exile. Yeah? But once they sent into exile, actually no more king really. No more king because they are now captives in a foreign country. But And after they were brought to Babylon, uh, Jeconiah, they were still producing. Jeconiah begot Sheatel. Sheatel begot Jerubabel and you know Jerubabel was the one who first led the people back into Judah to rebuild the place. So Jerubabel begot Abuit, Abuit, Abiud begot Elia king and Elia king begot Azor, Azor begot Zadok, Zadok begot Achim. And Achim begot Elu, Eliud, Eliud begot Eliezer, Eliezer begot Matan, and Matan begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, 
of whom was born Jesus Christ, who is called Jesus, who was born Jesus, who is called Christ. You notice there is a change in pattern when we come to verse 16. You notice? Because before that is this person be God, this person, this person be God, this person. Easy. A sequence. But when you come to verse 16, and Jacob be God Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. If you follow the pattern, then after Jacob be called Joseph, it should be Joseph be called Christ. But Jesus was not conceived by him. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit upon Mary. And so it is described here very clearly for us that indeed this is the seed, this is the promise from God, not of men. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary is the fifth lady in this list. And she is a Gentile. No, she is a Jew. My apologies. The other four ladies were Gentiles. The fifth lady in this list, a Jew, and that is Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. And if you are the Jew looking and studying this, then surely, yes, confirm, definitely, this person, Jesus, he is from Abraham. So he passed the Abrahamic test, and this person is Davidic. He passed the Davidic test. He is indeed the seed, the promise. Now, if you had counted from Abraham to David in verse 6, 14, and then from verse 7, you count Solomon to Jeconias up to verse 11. Okay, you have 14. And then by right, and by right, you should start with who? Sheatel. Because Jeconiah already counted, so you cut from Sheatel and you count. Then when you hit uh, verse 16, you only got 13. And so people start making great uh, uh, revelation. The 14 uh, must be us. Uh, because Jesus, you know, gave birth to the church. And so it's the 14th generation. Now, when Matthew wrote this, uh, he, did, he never knew what is the church. I mean, not, not in the same understanding that we have. And he counted, and this is an accountant he counted and he said 14 yeah 14 in the first section uh, up to david then from david 14 and then from captivity in babylon until christ 14. so there must be something that we missed out now this is one version i'll show you my version okay. so you have david and then solomon then come the jaconias and then he started with repeating Jeconias again. Why? Because you read, uh, if your England is as good. Uh. So, verse 17, the last part is, until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations, right? And then, and from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. So, until the captivity was Jeconias. And from the captivity, Jeconias all the way to Jesus. Okay. But I show you an easier way, my opinion. You read again verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham, from Abraham to David. So from Abraham, you count Abraham or don't count Abraham? You count, right? Count. To David, you count David or not? You count, right? Yeah. Okay, fine. A 14th generation. And then Next, from David, this Matthew could have written from Solomon until the captivity in Babylon. You follow me now? But he didn't. He didn't write 
from Solomon until the captivity. He wrote from David. From David until the capti captivity. So you should actually start the second list with David. David. So you come all the way, you come all the way down, then you will find that the list ends with Josiah. The list ends with Josiah. And from the captivity, from the captivity, it's not a person. Captivity is the the period, the season that they are there. And from the captivity, then you start with who? Jeconias. Then you come down to Jesus. You follow me? So I will read it this way that Abraham to David okay. And then from David, so I count David. Like from Abraham, I count David, uh, Abraham. So from David, I count David. So David should be on top, and then Josiah will come down to 14. Yes. And then, this is until the captivity, and then from the captivity. So from captivity, I will count the first person there. And there is Jeconias. And it goes all the way. So you have. Uh, but this is the table I managed to pull out. When I have time, I draw a new table for you. <laughs> so, yeah. But don't get hung up. At least we know that indeed, this is the validity of Jesus who claimed that he is the king. And he is the root and the offspring of David. And he fulfilled the promise that he is indeed from the line of Abraham, the seed, Abraham and the seed, as we read in Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. So, all we can say is, Amen. Why Amen? Amen means, so be it. That's it. Don't argue anymore. This is, this is indeed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So interesting, no? Studying the genealogy. We've got one more in view. Then you say, eh? Hey, the way it is described is a bit different. But I'll show you what is that purpose. But it points to the same outcome. So now before we take a break, we look at verse 18. The virgin birth. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother, Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you go and look at culture, you go and read some of this history uh, uh, of, of the people there and the culture. Because those days, uh, they really got nothing to do. Not like, got <laughs> finished PSLE, got O-level, got A-level, got university. We went to the desert and we saw how simple they, they were. And last week, I was in the desert, you saw. <laughs> or earlier this week. I didn't know a Bintang got Genesis land. I didn't know Bintang got sent. I, it, but it's real, you know, I, I think it's real. The, the nature carved out the thing. So they put some camel and some uh, some other angkong there. You know, some pictures. So you stand there, you sit on the horse and the camel. And some people ask me, Elder, where are you? Is there a real camel? <laughs> so next time, uh, we don't need to go so far. Just go Bintang. <laughs> Now, these are desert people, these are agricultural people. Life is very simple. So at a very young age, they do hell. What they are most worried uh, is, uh, hey, my son grow up, I've got no wife. Sad, right? So better choke first. Better book first, reserve. Yeah. And you also don't want your daughter to be without. Because a, a, do a, a good woman standing in society is actually inferior but if you are well married into a family and and you you you, you, you are faithful you are you are better than a single lady unproductive lady cannot produce or you are widow or widow without kids your standing in society be really so low you really be begging so in order to mitigate all this risk to make sure such things don't happen 
neither for the guy nor for the for the girl. They do matchmaking very early. So, but this betrothal, uh, it's something that is more than just engagement. Not like we all in, in this current environment, we engage, don't like we break the engagement. But it is likened to be a marriage. It is binding. Really, if you break it off, it's almost like a divorce. But it's very binding. And the marriage can only take place officially. The earliest is at the age of 12. But most of these uh, people who are betrothed, especially the girls, they're usually between 12 to 15 years old. So reserve and book. So in that case, uh, that was a situation that Mary was in. He was already, she was already betrothed to be married to Joseph. And they will not have any intimacy, not allowed to. Because if it happened, the woman, I mean, the, the, this adulteress will be stoned. Or, or what, what you call, uh, uh, yeah, they be stoned to death. So, they do not have intimacy, they don't have relationship, but just that they are betrothed to each other for marriage. So, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, and we look at Joseph like the, yeah, just being used by God and so on. But the important thing is God chose him. God didn't choose you. He didn't choose me. But God chose him. And this guy was meek. He was obedient. He could be rebellious. Huh? Right? No, I don't want. Why? You know, betrothed to me. Why? <laughs> don't want. Break it. He could have. And God give us that, that choice. We can choose to accept his will or reject his will. So we must also look at Joseph and commend him because he obeyed. Uh, betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. By then she was about four months pregnant. But we must look back further to even Genesis. This was first mentioned in Genesis chapter 3 verse 16. You remember this what, uh, occasion? Eve and Adam failed the test of obedience in the Garden of Eden. And God came and He pronounced punishment uh, upon them. And verse 13, And the Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done? But you know, first of all, he's, He released His punishment and, and rebuke upon who first? Adam first. But Adam will, not my fault, she, she started it. But God will go after the head of the household. And the Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me. Eight. It's all kicking the can, you know. You blame me, I blame him, I blame the serpent. In this world that we live in, uh, they are full of temptation. You are supposed to resist the devil and he will flee from you. Jesus showed to us that he can overcome temptation. Because after he was water baptized, he fasted in the desert 40 days. And he was tempted, right? And he resisted. And the devil flee from him. So it is still our duty. The onus is on us to reject. So anyway, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle. More than every beast of the field on your belly you shall go. That's why you see the serpent got no legs one. Yeah. But Jesus said, Be as wise as a serpent, right? He said, wow, no legs. <laughs> uh, still call him wise. Because if you've got no legs, you try and move around. Not easy. But the snake without legs can still get around. <laughs> Am I right? So be wise as a serpent. On your belly, 
you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life and I will put enmity between you the serpent right? and the woman why not the man? why not the man? we're all a very chauvinistic all talking about man <laughs> generation but it is between you and the woman between your seed seed this is the serpent seed so all the evil, the devil and the cohorts and all the kahoots and all the demons are uh, your seed and her seed. And Adam is standing there looking like a fool. Hey, wait, 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 wait. My seed, I'm a man, you know. I'm a man. Why are you talking about her seed? But that is not God's design. God's design is through her seed. Because God's grand plan is through the Holy Spirit. He will be God, Jesus. Amen. It's not Joseph, be God, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it all started in Genesis chapter 3. Mm -hmm. And God already said, between your seed, the serpent, and her seed, and he put there, he shall bruise. Mm -hmm. And who is this? Jesus. Her seed, her seed, yeah. her seed. Her seed is he, masculine. Her seed, a man. He shall bruise your head. So he will step over you, hurt you. And you shall bruise his heel. And indeed, when Jesus was on the cross, they nailed the two hands and they nailed his feet. So, then verse 16 to read, this is called labor pain. <laughs> Coming, coming. Okay. <laughs> They're boiling water now. Okay, so and she was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. And this is the first record of the word Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Before this, you don't find Holy Spirit. So this is child of the Holy Spirit, first mentioned in the New Testament. And by then she was about four months pregnant. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, righteous, and with respect to the law, because there was the law, Moses' law and, 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 and the other uh, uh, laws, uh, he was abiding. So he was a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Because if he made her a public example, that means announce the thing. You know what will happen to her? She will be stoned to death. She will be stoned. He can always accuse her of adultery, being unfaithful. She will be stoned to death. But he being a just man, and then the good man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded. It means compassionate. Compassionate. Jesus' ministry is out of compassion. Compassionate to put her away secretly. It means in the original text, divorce her. So in the Bible, there are occasions when divorce can take place. Okay? As permitted within the words as described in the Bible. So in this case, he said, Okay, minded to put her away secretly. So don't expose her. <laughs> but while he thought about these things, thinker, he's not a Russian, you know, Russians. <laughs> they rush from here to there, they just so impulsive. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And you know who is this angel? Who is this angel? Yes, uh, not many. Uh. Okay, and the angel and the angel said to her, who is this angel? Gabriel. Where is his name? The name is Okay, yeah. Where? Ah, there? Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. And we went there with church of the Annunciation, there's an announcement. 
So, the angel is Gabriel. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, say, Joseph, son of David. Son of David, right? We just read the, the lineage. His name is there. Do not be afraid to take to you, marry your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And we just read this so often and oh, okay. But we must commend Joseph for accepting this. Because that means he knew something about the Holy Spirit. He knows the scriptures. If not, who is the Holy Spirit? You follow me? You just suddenly you say, Hey, but how did she get pregnant? How did my wife get pregnant? Oh, uh, that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And who is this Holy Spirit? I want to go after him. You know? But he is a man of faith, of God, believing, okay? and he knows about the Holy Spirit, and he accepted. Verse 21, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, Jesus, which means, means what? God saves. Anyway, the meaning is given, given to you in the following words, for he will save. Jehovah saves, like Joshua, Je Jehovah saves. For he will save, his people from their sins. And that's why we describe Jesus as the new Moses. Now, who is the first Moses, original Moses? Moses, ah. <laughs> he delivered them from Egypt. And Egypt is a picture of the world. Jesus is going to deliver his people from their sins. Jesus is going to deliver us not from the world of Egypt, but he's delivering us from the presence of sin in this world. So he's taking us to a... So this whole world is like Egypt now. Not that land of Egypt in Egypt, but this whole world is like a picture of Egypt and he's delivering us eventually from this presence of sin into the heavenly home. So, but first, we have to be delivered from the penalty of sin, then delivered from the power of sin, eventually you'll be delivered from the presence of sin. And that's what he came to do, to save his people from their sins. Verse 22, now we see the Matthew's fulfillment formula. You know, it's Matthew's fulfillment formula. We read. So, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. And as you go through this, oh, we're still in chapter 1, right? If you go through the rest of this uh, book, this was done so that it fulfilled this. It, because he's trying to prove to the Jewish leader what happened here actually was prophesied before. And confirm so evidence clear so all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord to the prophet say behold a virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated God with us where is this verse from every Christmas we sing one Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Right now. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. You know this verse, right? You know or not? You don't know, we go Christmas carol again. <laughs> of course we know. But I want to point to you this. I mean, we know the part, uh, Behold, the virgin shall be with child. Do you know, if you go and read some earlier version of the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, I think they use it a lot in the States. Uh, maybe the liberals or something. They don't use the word virgin. A young woman. Because it just, uh, they cannot conceive, cannot accept that this uh, virgin can conceive and give birth. So they use the word young woman. Now, please, don't translate the word of God to your satisfaction. To your convenience 
Because you, whatever you take away from the word of God, the blessings will be taken away from you. But some versions, they do that. So, so that if you read some versions, don't, don't think all Bible and all the versions are the same. Some versions are written by different people, translated to their own liking. So they use a young woman. But you and I know it is virgin. And the Catholics, uh, you know, they have got this description, even on their churches and so on, uh, of the perpetual virgin. Perpetual, you know this, right? Yes. There is no such thing. Because if you look at Matthew chapter 13, 35, Is it Matthew 13, 35? Uh, 55, sorry, 55. Okay. So, uh, 55. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers, and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Where did where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended. So they were challenging. But I want to point to you that the scriptures recorded for us that Jesus had brothers and sisters. So after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph continued to conceive and produce kids of their own. So she is not a perpetual virgin. Okay? Now but that's not the thing I want to point to you. So the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. All prophesied a few hundred years ago by Isaiah in chapter 7 verse 14. And it's so accurately fulfilled. Not missed by a mouth, but it is exactly as it was. And so they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Why? Why was this translated? Because when Isaiah wrote, it was, it was, it, it was Old Testament, right? That was written in what? Hebrew, right? Hebrew. But which is translated, and Matthew translated it into Greek, because it's written in Greek. God with us. It's so that the Gentiles people who are not Jews, they will also understand the meaning of Emmanuel, God with us. So that the good news, the fulfillment of this prophecy is also meant for us to understand and to accept. You follow me? It is not meant for the Jews only. So God used Matthew to translate it, to tell us that we are in his plan of redemption. In his salvation plan, he thought of you, of you, of you, of me. And he translated it. Because at that point in time, the lingua franca is Greek. And it translated to Greek, it means God with us. Wow. Then again, you say, wow. I'm part of the good news. And I'm involved in, in the benefit of this good news. And God with us, what is the significance? You read all the way to Matthew 28, verse 20. You know this verse? Verse 19. Go therefore into the world, or go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I am with you. I am with you. God with us. So don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Just press on. He is with us all the way. Verse 24. Then Joseph being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. And that is what? Obedience. And God loves obedience. And took to him his wife. So at first, he thought of putting her away quietly. But now he took to him his wife. He might suffer a bit of embarrassment. Got to answer some very uh, uh, disturbing and sensitive questions. But he took it. So when you stand up for Christ, 
don't be embarrassed. You're standing up for him. And did not know her, that means had no relationship with her, till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. Hey, he didn't name his son. Hey, every father and mother would love to name your own child, right? But he accepted the name that the Lord has decided for this boy. And he called his name Yeshua, Jesus. So, what we have just done in chapter 1 is the heritage of the king. So you may take your break.